and welcome to another Poison TV YouTube video. I am Dom, and we are joined by Gentle Giant. Hey Dom, yet again we have another replay to cast for you, and it's gonna be yet again Z between Dola here spawning in the top right side. And in the top bottom left, we have Knight and the Blue Protoss player. We do indeed. And uh, we're going to try and make this a little bit more entertaining for you guys. So um, please do leave us your feedback. We want to try and, try and instill the soul and delight and brighten up your day through the power of StarCraft and casting. Um, we tried it before and we, we actually found it that we sounded like a German and an English robot. So... Um, here is take two of those shenanigans, so uh, enjoy. We hope you enjoy it. Yeah, so um, you can definitely check out a lot of our uh, VODs here uh, on YouTube, like uh, we have from GoFest to, but also like a lot of team leagues. So um, uh, we have, of course, um, a lot of different casters, so especially uh, for every kind you like uh, there I think there's always every matchup so you should definitely check this out yeah absolutely anyway with fanatic uh, night end he loves this kind of double 15 gas play we see him do this quite a bit and he loves aggressive plays we've seen previously in the past he's gone for like uh, warp prism double immortal zealot plays and um, solar he tends to open up in the same way and just make small adjustments to his build um, and of course yeah, Solar, he plays for Samson Khan. He is an amazing player. Um, he's 17 years old. He has a real dedication to StarCraft. The other day, oh, we were casting him, and he actually was staying up till He was at 4 a.m. He had school the next day, and he was in Go for SC2. So he was... He's a hardcore player, and he wasn't like... He cheesed his way through. Like, if you go for SC2 and I was up that late, I'd be just like, screw this, bailing burst every game. And if I win, I win. <laughs> if I don't, I don't. And uh, additionally to that, he has very good English, so I saw him uh, quite a few times. And I think going for that kind of European Cups and playing um, uh, much of this, he's uh, actually improving uh, his skills into that. Yeah, absolutely. And he's going for this very, very quick uh, third here. He didn't quite go third uh, before Hatchery, but it was pretty close to the wire. Um, and again, he likes to build two Zerglings at the start, use them for scouting. And uh, for Night End at the moment, we just have. Uh, wow, look at this, we just have the Nexus. And has he actually scouted it? Yes, he has, so he does know about the uh, the third hatchery here. Yeah, I wonder how Night End actually wants to punish this. I mean, I mean he might be going for a gateway um, pressure as uh, seeing that uh, hatchery. So this. Uh, I think this is uh, one of the possibilities he might be going for, go for. He has a probe already in position there in the top side, so would be surprised actually to see this. Yeah, I, I mean the standard reaction I've seen at the moment is that Protoss is like to do four gate pressure um, against like a really fast third hatchery, and Naniwar showed in stream hack a while ago just how kind of foolproof it was. And of course, the only person to actually take him down was Leenock with his uh, like 1-1 one, one early Ling style, but um, well, yeah, we'll have to see if he does throw down, there we go, four gateways, so it's going to be four gateway pressure, and on cue here, we have an Overlord coming in, and he's going to scout all of this coming down from Night End. Yeah, absolutely, and on the other side, now I'm seeing the Overlord, just seeing what he's actually going to go for, so I wonder if he's still like... Uh, executing it in the same way he wanted to do it, but he's still trying to scare this all of the way, but definitely wants to try for the aggression. There we go, the pylon being planted down, and Solar wants to prepare against this. He has the road war now on the way, but it might be just not in time. Yeah, absolutely. And of course, if you have a look at this, the, the natural is a fair way away from the actual third. Um, so this queen is going to be exposed on its own. There's no spine crawler here either, and that pylon got up. He did hunt them, try and hunt them down, but he didn't scout it. And we have four zealots pushing in. The roach warrant has been finished, so he now can begin building roaches. But we have to look, yeah, up to 45 drones. So he has gone a little bit greedy. Absolutely. So um, there we go. The zealots and the stalker now already chasing away the queen. 
Doesn't want to get trapped, but here we go. Eight roaches now on the way. They might be a little bit delayed and not hatching from the same kind of spot and therefore being a little bit risky. Doesn't want to lose any of them. Yeah, and no, they don't want to lose any queens whatsoever. They are oh. they're his lava babies, but um, we have a great time warp coming down from Night End here, and actually these zealots are doing tons of damage. Another great time warp coming down there. Roach is in a good position, but obviously he's fighting with drones and lings right now. They have a look at the workers, lost count, choosing four workers. So, so far, Solar controlling this fairly well, but of course, Night End is just chewing down this third right now. Yeah, absolutely, and he's also not having that much lava here, so he really wants to produce as many units as possible, having a lot of roaches now on the way. They don't cost a lot of lava, but they need a long time to pop out, and therefore night and giving the opportunity to get even more damage done. Yeah, absolutely, that lava starving is really costing him. Look at, let's say he's got an okay economy for solar, but um, it's, it's, it's the lava really limiting him right now. It does look like he will hold for now, and uh, night end showing that he uh, yeah he realizes that this is probably the uh, end of this push for now because he's building probes again and he's also throwing down this robo. Well, I think in, in the end, and I don't <laughs> was uh, actually pushing this uh, quite well. And now he needs to just to be careful about any counter aggression. But here we go. The stalkers actually the ones being uh, yeah forcing the roaches actually to retreat here. And the we don't have that much energy on the military course, so he has no retreat path yet. Yeah, absolutely. And again, the, we always see so like a little bit out of position here. The roaches are just coming in one by one. Numbers are beginning to build here, and of course, uh, Night End can just retreat for the moment. Um, did have an opportunity to snipe that uh, third, and the Mothership Corps has actually got 12 kills to it, so it's actually doing very well on the uh, SUV hunting um, ability. Very, very true, and the Stalkers actually doing a lot of damage, sniping one road here by another, very good control here by Night End, and limiting uh, really the the income here from Solon. Just now, um, the bases are being saturated and we do see the borrow upgrade here for Solo that could be working out here very nicely but uh, he just really needs the numbers as Night End still continuing to pressure. Yeah and considering that you know he, he's macroing behind it he's doing an extremely good job right now. We look at the economy it's 54 to 43 right now which is pretty good for the Protoss and he's also doing a lot of damage. We have Lings and Queens and Roaches trying to defend the third, but Night End trading quite cost effectively right now with all of these units. Wow, Night End, very, very nicely done. Sniping one unit by another, just now being yet again uh, forced to retreat, but forcing his opponent to uh, pull a lot of these drones, and in total he killed 13. Yeah, this, uh, wow, the Mothership caught up to 14 kills right now. Zealots are going to join the fray. Speed is done and also Barrow, so he can use that regeneration ability. Um, but here come the Zerglings here, and there's a big flank of them, and the Stalkers are in danger of getting surrounded here. There we go, getting pinned against the wall right now, and Solar will clean the last of this Protoss push up. Yeah, there we go, Night Hand will be retreating for the moment, but look at that, he's actually getting Colossi now in. Uh, behind this, he's preparing for a very strong uh, two base timing here, and this might be just going in favor for Solo, who is getting some more time right now. He's going for a Spire there as well, so it really depends now whenever he has some of these corruptors out. Yeah, absolutely. We see him come in to the natural as well of Nyan does scout exactly what's going on. We have a look at the vision. There we go, sees the robo coming down, sees the fact there is no third and is gearing up towards which would look like a very aggressive push. Yeah, Solo yet again trying to re-establish his third base and uh, it's gonna go and uh, want, wants to uh, yeah deny any third base but there, no there is none Night and really now getting yeah one colossal by another and will be moving out very very soon. Yeah, absolutely. Going towards the third, so maybe opting to, of course, go for this third. A borrowed ling there, which can tell if there is a this uh, nexus going down. Fourth coming finally down for Solar here, and um, 
to also drop the spire, and we see five, ten mutilists out on the map already. Oh, so I wonder if actually um, Sola is attempting to go for a base trade, because he is getting another hatchery here on the uh, top, uh, bottom right side there as well, so this is maybe the only chance here for Sola to come back into this game. Here we go, Knight Ed is re uh, going to advance to the third base, which is under so much pressure. Yeah, absolutely. Mewtwo is making a little bit of that there, but the drone's dying, which is even more important. Great force field there from Night End, trapping off all of those workers, reducing them down by another eight there. And of course, now we see him just pushing on up into the main. Absolutely, no. there we go. The roaches are actually attacking into the natural base, and the mutants are, are focusing down the immortal, which is very, very nice. And uh, there we go. Not base trade scenario. Yeah, here we go. Mutas in the natural right now. Lings and Roaches joining, but of course this is a very powerful force. And now we see the recall back from Night End Ooh. after taking down the natural of Solar. And this huge lump of force here will be able to push him away very, very easily. Wow, very cool move by Night End. I wouldn't have expected to see the recall, but this is very, very smart. Not losing the natural, still getting that constant income here and therefore giving the opportunity to go for a very good follow-up attack. And look at that, uh, even the third base has been sniped. Yeah, uh, Solar in a world of trouble right now. He's losing bases left, right and centre. He realised that obviously the Mutalisk base trade is on the cards and we see one, two, three, four, five, six cannons coming down in the natural, really fortifying it. But of course we see Solar <laughs> still with a very large lump of cannons. Oh, it seems like Naiden wants to go for a uh, DT follow-up here and um, securing his um, very, yeah second and so important game. And he really wants to defend this here as much as possible, having the Mutas on the map, of course. Oh, the Mutas! Losing three of them in total. Very, very, very bad move here by Sola, who is really struggling. Yeah, the, having that reduced music count, you can't even engage um, the Stalkers on a one-to-one -one basis right now. We do have him re-establishing his natural, trying to fit in a few drones here and there, but he's very equal to the Protoss, but the Protoss tech is very, very strong right now. Absolutely, there we go, the DT Shrine there, as well as the additional Stalkers here to deal against these Mutalists. Uh, Solar yet again is opting to go for the counter-aggression but of course Night End being aware of this, having the cannons already in place, therefore not fearing too too much. Yeah, absolutely. And we now we see the Misha is poking on in. He's just gonna try and bludgeon this down. Zealots are warping on in. That's a lot of cannons right now. Ling's fighting against the Zealots. There we go. There's the Nexus cannon as well to have this. We see in the meantime though, Night End pushing up towards the four, killing this off with relative ease, and we have now a full base trade going on. Oh, he might be actually uh, going for the snipe at the DT Shrine, he's seeing it, there we go, He is attacking the DT Shrine, no DTs will be able to be uh, warped in as well as having that pylon block that might be occurring here uh, for night and, and uh, oh, but he doesn't have any probes here with him, so he's really now, um, yeah, he ne really needs to kill him off right now. Yeah, absolutely, but night end with a huge, he's got so much DPS here. And we have a look in the uh, natural for Night End now. There is another nine, wow, there's seven cannons, eight cannons, nine cannons going down, ten cannons. This is a really, really strong boss. Uh, no photon overcharge available, and the links are kind of kicking on through, but the cannons are just doing so much damage. Pros joining the fright as well, and it looks like Night End may just as well have this game. Yes, indeed, this is still very close. I mean, like, when he, if he is killing the cannons, but no, the muters are not enough, and Night End, Night End takes the win. Yep, so uh, congratulations to their Night End. Of course, guys, if you have enjoyed this, do click the subscribe button, do leave us your feedback. This is something new to us, so we would really value your opinion. Um, we will have more YouTube content coming soon, so thank you, take care, and goodbye.